Follow all Moser's news on his website, www.mosiers.com. And on his Facebook Moser's and Instagram Moser's 13 page 2. For daily exclusive publications. Hello and welcome on Moser for this new video dedicated to the montage. Um, and the today topic, let's continue on the arpeggio. And let's see for the part. A second screen, but its name, come on. Shoot all along the video because on the bonus, I will talk to you about the new setting that we have on the Montage M on that screen. If you are not already a Moisture YouTube follower, please click on subscribe and click on the bell to be informed when I release a new video. If you like the content, please click on the blue thumb. And if you want to thank me for the free video I release for you on YouTube, please use bottom right the video. The super thanks. To go to Warp Common Screen, it's easy. Make sure you're at part level, because we need to go to part level. On navigation, let's click on ARP, and it's go to the individual screen we saw in the previous video. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Let's go to the common screen. In this video, I've decided to explain to you the top banner. Why am I choose this screen to be in second position? When you press navigation, you get to individual. That's why I made the individual video first. Also, to explain that in individual screen, we've seen that there are date and velocity settings that can be edited individually for each arpeggio variation. The first thing you need to understand about the common screen is that all the settings you can edit here will affect all eight arpeggio variations in the same way. That's why I'm posting this video in second. So understood that. You can make dedicated adjustments in individual screen. Understand that on this one, you make global adjustments. Let's take a look at the top banner. Master is the equivalent of this button here, simply activated or not activated. Then, for each part of our performance, each sound we play, we can activate by part, arpeggio up to a maximum of 8 parts, depending on what we have to do. I'm going to activate the arpeggio, obviously with my own button. The sync quantize, I'll talk about later. The arpeggio group, I'll keep it for the bonus. The first setting, is a bit like what we saw in the previous video on the bonus. Here, my arpeggio is set to off in sort. Off, which means that if I release my hands, the arpeggio stops when I release the notes. On is what we saw when I did shift plus press the arpeggio button. I can release my notes, it continues to play the arpeggio. There's another setting here, not accessible with the shift functions, called sync off. Sync off means that, when I let go of the keyboard notes, the arpeggio will stop being hearing. But the thing is, it doesn't go back to the beginning. In fact, it stays at the performance tempo, which is at the top. Remember, it's here. It stays in sync with the tempo. You can't hear it, but it continues to play silently. And as soon as I press the keyboard again, you hear it again. There is a good example with one of Motif XF's performances. Double Deep the Funk, which show this setting very well. So it's very useful in certain cases, where you want to lift a hand, for example, then play other things with the right hand, press again, and it's well synchronized with the others parts sync on tempo. Otherwise, it might start again, but not at the right time, because if I go to off for example, it always starts at the beginning. Change timing. Measure or real time. Measure simply means that, at the end of the bar, it will change, so that's the classic setting. I'll select it. And so on, and so forth, 
whatever the duration of the arpeggio in bars, at the next bar, it changes. If I switch to real time, that means real time change. You're going to tell me. This is a nice setting, but it's unplayable, apart from being accurate to a hundredth of a second. If I'm playing something here, how can I use it? That's where the top setting, sync quantize, comes in. This sync quantize is the synchronization setting when you change variation. When I'm on measure, I don't need to activate it, it can stay on off, because automatically at the end of the bar, it will change in the rhythm. For example, for my drums, it would be better if I started here in 480, that would be much better. You'll see I'm in real time. It's much smoother. Be careful though, you need to hit the right beat. Speaking of beats, let's skip the key mode setting and go to loop. And arpeggio loops, so if I turn loop off, my arpeggio no longer loops. This can be useful depending on the arpeggio. Maybe you want it to play only once. Then, the second use is to know how long the arpeggio have number of bars recorded. You can take the PDF data list and have a look, but right let's playing our arpeggio. It stops, and you know it's 4 bars long. The art play only, I'll certainly do a quick Friday with more details. As example, if I turn it off, it doesn't play. Whereas if I turn the art play only off. Then you hear all the notes without arpeggio. The drum kit arpeggio only plays if this button is set to on. This is very useful for playing piano or keyboard introductions, as an example. On scene memory where it's memorized, it'll start if the ARP master is memorized in the scene. I'll come to the key mode at the end, because this one needs to be digested. With the swing, I'll be able to unrhythm this arpeggio a little, because it's played in a very precise way. I can give it a more human feel with micro shifts. But don't use it too loud, or it won't be pretty. You can modify the swing in a positive or negative direction. The unit multiply. So it's not the drums that are the best example, but in this video, I wasn't going to change the performance too many times so as not to make it last too long. If I set it to 50%, I'm still at the same tempo, at 120, but my arpeggio will play twice as fast. That's it. If I set it to 200%, my arpeggio will play half as fast. It's the end of the evening, the drummer is pretty tired. I can go up to settings of 400%, so it's pretty huge. This setting is great when you've got a lead arpeggio eventually, or one that's going pretty fast, you like the rhythmic or melodic pattern, but really it's going too fast for your performance. The unit multiply lets you modify it. Be careful with intermediate values, as you need to keep it in time with the rhythm. With the 33%, it won't always fit in well with other arpeggios. The quantize strength lets you quantize a little more strongly than the swing. But if I push the strength like this, why doesn't anything happen? Because, of course, the arpeggio is well set. Here it's set with a quantize value of 120, depending on the instrument or arpeggio. To do something, I have to set it to a different value. As example, for the video, I'm going to go for 480.
This changes the way the arpeggio is played. Gate time and velocity rate, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, it's the same thing as we saw in individual, but watch out. All eight arpeggio variations will receive the same gate time and velocity rate. So beware, depending on what you want to do, it might be better to take it individual rather than apply it here. Obviously, a gate on the drums won't have much effect, but velocity does, so let's have a listen. Our drummer either goes wild or plays it quieter. The two settings here, I'll have to change the sound to show you. We can decide to have an arpeggio that is triggered according to the velocity of our keyboard playing. As example, to set that it only plays if I play really loudly or softly, we can do that. In number two like this, 70, it will only play when I reach 70 velocity. Drums aren't necessarily the best example, but here's you clearly see of what it does. I'm going to reset it to zero. This setting is very important. When you do a split with different sounds, and there are arpeggios playing, this is where you need to split the range. This is the zone where the melodic or rhythmic chords of the arpeggio are triggered and taken into account. I'll also do a more detailed Quick Friday about this. I took a CS15 saw lead, and I can show you a little bit of gate time with a sound like that. Without having to edit the sound, you can hear that we can do some very interesting things with this setting. Let's use this sound to see the octave shift setting. Depending on where you place your sound on the keyboard, you may need to change its octave through the note shift. Change the key by more or less 12 semitones. With arpeggios, the advantage is that you can do this directly here, listen. For the octave range, in fact, I can shift it according to the octave in which the arpeggio was recorded. I can make it play once on that octave, then go hop to the next octave, then again. The octave above or below, depending on what I put in octave range. and so on, you get the idea. You can go positive or negative, up to plus or minus three. For our arpeggio variations, we don't need to go back to the individual page to change them. You have the arc select here. Let's finish, to not burn your brains too much, with key mode. This is how the arpeggio is rendered when I play the keyboard. The most common choice is sort. You hear arpeggio linked to what I play on the keyboard. If I actually set this to through, in this setting, if I play a chord, the arpeggio sequence will vary according to the note order. If I choose the direct setting, I don't have the right arpeggio to do this. This arpeggio won't play. This setting is best suited to control arpeggios. These are arpeggios that can control panning as example. We have arpeggios that can control the filter. We have arpeggios that will manage controllers, events, but not notes. For this arpeggio type, you need to be on direct. Then you have two settings. Sort plus direct, 
where the arpeggio is reproduced as if it were in sort, and the chord notes are reproduced as if they were indirect. Finally, you have the through plus direct setting, where direct is always active, and the through setting is taken into account. Depending on what you're going to do, you may need to choose one of these settings. Would you like to take in hand, learn or improve your knowledge of your Yamaha synthesizer or stage keyboard? Book your Moesu Masterclass now. Your private session is conducted online through Zoom. Take all benefit of Joel expertise for all these topics. It's available for users all over the world, through Music Hackspace platform, in English or in French. It's easy, select your date and time from the Moesu calendar available slots on your time zone. Choose your topic and after your online personal meeting, you can download your session video to review it, as many any time you need. And now, that's the bonus time. So for this bonus, we'll keep it short because the video is pretty huge, but there's a lot to say about this common screen. We haven't even seen the arpeggio group. We can make arpeggio groups up to P, which leaves us with 16 groups. What's the point of this function? Let's say this synth lead is fine, but I want to boost it with FMX, because what's also great about the Montage M is that you can mix AWM2 with FMX and or ANX. I'll be back, I'm adding an FMX part. I put an FMX part, and in fact, I'm going to make it play the same arpeggio. But then you'll say to me, we'll go to navigation, to ARP, and there's no arpeggio on this part. I'll have to go to my part 1, I'll have to copy the arpeggios, I'll have to put back, if I've made common settings, do the same settings. No, look, that's what this function is for, and it's only available on Montage M. Arpeggio group A for part 1, arpeggio group A for part 2. There was nothing there, the arpeggios were automatically set. If I'd made common settings, all common settings are duplicated, so let's move change the swing a bit. All the settings I can make on this screen, which we'll see in the next video, all the settings I make on one of the two parts, apply to the other part. All the parts in the same arpeggio group will have the same settings. This new Montage M function is really handy. This is how we do it, for multi-parts with leads, pads, basses, to boost your sound. You can easily mix ANX, FMX, AWM2 sounds, and use arpeggio in so easy way. Don't hesitate, because it really gives huge improvement to your sound, and you don't have to redo everything. Just put the arpeggios on the same group, and you've got 16 groups available, so there's largely enough to do. This is video ending. I hope you have liked it. I hope you have find it interesting. As a reminder, you can book your Moesio Masterclass directly on the Music Arcspace platform. See you soon for one of our Moesio video. Bye. Would you like to discover, learn, or improve your knowledge of your Yamaha synthesizer or stage keyboard? Book your Moesers Masterclass now. Your private session is conducted online through Zoom. Take all benefit of Moesers expertise, Yamaha synthesizers and stage keyboard specialist and consultant for Yamaha Music Europe and France. As member of international Yamaha Tech Talk live team, music hackspace instructor and host of the Camelot Pro Sessions. Joel take care of your experience level. Whether you're a beginner or a skilled user, get the most out of your Yamaha synthesizer, stage keyboard, John Mela software suite or Camelot Pro. Book your session for your personal Moesers one-to-one session. It's available for users all over the world through Music Hackspace platform. It's easy. Select your date and time from the Moesers calendar available slots on your time zone.
Thank you for watching this Moesers video. Do not forget to click on like, subscribe and click on the bell to be informed when a new video is online. Do not hesitate to write a comment or ask a question. See you soon, bye!